Welcome to the Data Hall YouTube channel. In our previous video, we understood the theoretical uh, explanation of the difference in difference analysis. In this video, we are going to look into the difference in difference analysis uh, and how do we perform that in Stata. So uh, first we are going to look into, in this specific video, we're going to look into the manual method. And this is important because it would give us a more in-depth uh, uh, understanding of uh, difference and difference method and the second reason is that uh, some of us would not have stata 17 or above and in stata 17 there was a command uh, that was introduced which is called a did regress and this uh, did regress which stands for difference and difference regress uh, is specifically designed uh, to perform difference and difference and uh, that was introduced in Stata 17 and it is available in, in any version that is coming after that. Uh, but before Stata 17, it isn't available and you have to perform uh, different ways, uh, different uh, commands to perform this, this difference and difference uh, analysis. So we are going to look into that. Um, so we are going to use the regress command, the diff command, which is a user return command, and then uh, rec hdfe command. Uh, which is again a user written command, then we are going to look into how do we include other covariates or control variables and uh, how do we perform the parallel trend assumptions. In our next video, we are going to look into the same things that we would discuss in this video, but uh, specifically tailored for Stata 17 and the latest versions. And in our last video, we will discuss about how do we perform the triple difference or difference in difference in difference analysis in Stata. So let's get started. Let's start with the manual method. Let me import this data, uh, which contains uh, different patients. And what this data is about, uh, we have different patients. And for each patient, we have two values. One is before the treatment and the second one is after the treatment. So this variable after contains the time period. Uh, then we have this treatment variable, which uh, is equal to one if that specific patient was provided uh, a treatment. Uh, in this case, it is a medicine that is being provided. And then we are going to measure the blood pressure. So we have blood pressure before and after the treatment, after the medicine, and then we have this treatment group, and we also have this control group, right? We do have certain covariates because uh, blood pressure is also affected by the age and the number of hours of sleep that we have. Now, remember, this is just a hypothetical data. It doesn't have to do anything uh, with the real life scenarios. So first, let's tabulate the the treatment and the after variable and summarize the blood pressure and not present the frequency and other data so we do not have any clutter. And this is just to give you an idea. Remember the difference in difference is, uh, it would be the mean of all the uh, control groups, all the patients in the control group before the treatment then we would have a mean of all the patients in the control group after the uh, treatment. Obviously, these are in the control group, so they haven't received any treatment. Uh, then we would have the same thing for the treatment group. And if we do the difference, that is the difference between uh, the post-treatment and pre-treatment. So one for 1.8 minus 1.5, 4.8. Uh, this would be the first difference for the treatment group and then this would be the second difference for the control group uh, right and if we calculate this we should get uh, minus 7.16 so this is the basic uh, method that we have discussed in our previous video and this is what we call difference and difference obviously we are going to use the regress command but just to give you an idea and what this says is that uh, uh, by on average uh, this this uh, this new treatment uh, reduces the blood pressure by by seven percent. But obviously, this this method do not provide us any statistical significance, uh, and we cannot include any control variables uh, such as age and uh, the sleep number of hours of sleep. So what we are going to do is we are going to use the regress command, and this is what usually you would do. But but just to give you an idea. 
So we use the regress command. Uh, we write the dependent variable name, which is the blood pressure. Uh, and then we perform a two way interaction. Remember, this is what we have explained in our video on uh, two way interaction. So we have a, uh, a, a, a categorical variable that is treatment, and then we have a categorical variable which is after. So if we perform the regression, uh, what we get is we get exactly the same uh, value that is a minus. 7.1 that is uh, there is a negative impact of the treatment on the blood pressure uh, but it is statistically insignificant remember for us to conclude uh, that there is an effect of the treatment this term uh, this term this two interaction term should be significant that is our p value should be less than 0.05 now just to give you further uh, clarification uh, if, if you are not aware of this double hash sign, what we are doing is we are generating a, a an interaction term. So we, you can manually generate this interaction term. Let's call it treat after and that would be the interaction of after and the treatment. And if I do that, now what we do is regress blood pressure, the treatment, the, the after uh, categorical variable, and then we incorporate the interaction term. And that should also give us exactly the same result. So just to give you an idea. Remember, we can also include the covariates, right? And that is what we get the result. And we can also have a fixed effect. And what that means is that we include uh, uh, the uh, a dummy variable for, for all the patients. That is our cross-sectional uh, variable, right? So uh, we get this, uh, this values. This would be different from the standard error would be different because it would be corrected. Uh, it, it is same as if you have used the XT rec command, but obviously to use XT rec, you have first have to do XT set. And we have patients as a cross section and after uh, variable as a time period. We do XT rec. This is the same command as over here, but instead of this I dot patient, we use this FE option with the XT rec command. If you are aware of fixed effect and random effect, otherwise you can uh, go back and watch my video on fixed effect and random effect. Uh, you see, we get the exact same, uh, uh, the exact same standard errors. Okay, so let's just dive into this another command, which is a user iterator command. That's that is diff. So if you haven't installed it, you would have to do ssc install diff to install this user iterator command. I have already installed it, so I'm not going to install it. Now this is exactly this would be exactly the similar thing as we did over here, uh, but uh, some of you might uh, be aware of this. So so I would just want to include this in my my lecture. Uh, so we know what is the difference between these two commands. So we use the diff uh, command name, then we dependent variable name, uh, and after comma we have two options. One is the treatment uh, treated, which would contain the treatment variable, and then we have a period option, which would contain the uh, the time period uh, variable. Now we get this, uh, uh, but somewhat in a different format. Uh, and if I can bring back the result from the regression that I took a snapshot of, you can see that we have exactly same uh, same coefficient and we have exactly same standard error. So just to give an idea that did this diff command would produce exactly same uh, same results, right? You can also check the help menu of the diff command and see what other options are there. You can do cluster, uh, right? There's a cluster option that you can perform. Uh, uh, then we can also use this covariates as we did over here. We did, uh, included age and sleep. So with the diff command, you can this, do this covariate option and include age and sleep. But when you do that, it, by default, it would not report the coefficients of the covariates. So what you need to do is include this option report, and then that would uh, report uh, the 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 covariates, right? So previously it, it didn't include that. Now there is one more command that, that you might come across, which is regHDFE. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce exactly this command, 
uh, but this is also the same. So what we do is use the command name, uh, then the dependent variable, but remember, you do not have to provide uh, the treatment or the after variable. What you need to do is make the interaction as we did over here using the generate command, right? This is the treat after variable that we generated. Uh, you'd have to use this treat after variable. And after comma, we would use absorb uh, patient and after, and that would absorb uh, the effects. And uh, you get these results. Now, one thing you would notice is that their uh, coefficient is same as we got with the regression command, uh, but the standard error is different, and this is what's uh, what 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 gets someone uh, uh, what gets uh, some researchers confused that why is the standard error different? And I would like to explain this. Um, so, so the the difference between the regress command and the uh, sorry the reg uh, reg hdfe command is that this reg hdfe command would use the fixed effect right so if if you remember i did this fixed effect over here so this is essentially using this fixed effect and if you do that uh, you would get uh, exactly uh, the result that uh, we would have got from the uh, reg hdfe command right okay now let's move towards the parallel trend assumption and how do we perform the parallel trend assumption if we have status 16 or, uh, or the earlier versions? For this, I'm going to use a different set of uh, data. And the only difference is that now I have three time periods. I have the, the time period before the treatment and the time period before, before the treatment, right? So there are two time periods before the treatment. Remember to perform parallel trend, uh, if you have watched my previous video, I have explained that we would need two time periods uh, before the treatment uh, to perform this parallel trend assumption. The rest of the data is same, but for each patient, we now have two time periods before the treatment. So what we do is we perform the graphical test and then we do the statistical test. To perform the graphical test, we use this two-way uh, graph two-way command and uh, if this looks scary you just have to use uh, you know you can just copy and paste that into your command but uh, but let me just explain it so we need four different sets of uh, of lines right but let me just execute this and then explain it okay so this is what we get and now it would be easy to understand so we have four different sets of of lines one is uh, this this the, there are two lines that are before the treatment. Uh, these two lines are, one is the for the treatment group and the second is the for the control group. And then we have two lines after the treatment line, right? So we have two li uh, four lines. And this is what we did is we, we use the linear fit uh, four times. This is the first linear fit. This is the second linear fit, uh, the third one, and then the fourth one. Uh, each one would contain uh, the BP and the after variable, right? The time period and the dependent variable. And we would uh, distinguish them uh, whether it is the treatment group before uh, the treatment, right? So if after is less than one, that means before the treatment. And this is a treatment group because treatment is equal to one. Similarly, treatment is not equal to one. That is the control group before the treatment. Uh, it would be uh, a, a, a color, uh, blue color line. And then we had this X line, horizontal line, uh, that would represent the time at which the treatment had occurred. And we have a legend, right? So what this tells us that graphically we can we can conclude that there is a parallel trend before the treatment, right? Uh, because before the treatment, these two lines follow uh, the same slope, same trend. But remember from our previous lecture, we, we concluded that the graphical test is not, uh, it would give us some idea, but it isn't a statistical test. For statistical test, what we need to do is we need to uh, regress, uh, uh, we need to perform the same regression of the dependent BP and interaction of the treatment and after, but we only need to include the data uh, 
before the treatment data, right? So this is what we just need to include. We need to drop this data. So what we did is we used this uh, condition is that after is less than uh, one. That means the zero and the minus one time periods. Uh, so if I execute this, you would get a, an error. And that error is saying that this fact, this variable cannot be uh, be negative. So what we need to do is see what it is saying is that uh, this after variable contains a negative value. So what we do is we just uh, generate a new variable. Uh, let's call it. Uh, okay, so we do not need to generate this variable. I have already generated it in, in our data set. And what I have done is I have added one to each of this uh, after value. So we do not have negative values. Uh, so we have zero, which means the first time period, then this one would represent the time period before the treatment and this two would represent the time period after the treatment. So what I do is instead of using the after variable, I use the after two variable. And um, I would tell them that I use if the after variable is less than a one or the after two variable is less than two if that is not confusing, right? Uh, but rather let's keep it that way okay so if i execute this command and now we would get our uh, our regression results and we need to look at the t value and if it is insignificant that means that there is a parallel trend and uh, the interaction term that means the treatment uh, i mean the treatment and the control group before the treatment uh, time period uh, have a same similar slope. This is what this two interaction would mean, right? So uh, I hope that was useful. Uh, stay tuned to, to this channel. We would, in our next video, we are going to look into uh, the uh, the different diff command uh, in in Stata 17 and the uh, for the latest versions.